Today we're reading some more concerning stuff that's also fun at the same time. And I've got good news, I'm home at the moment and I have power. I'm going to be even more of a video factory. I'm going to film so many videos today. I didn't realize how much I took power for granted. So yeah, not going to do that anymore. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe if you want to. And I hope you enjoyed the episode. Am I the a-hole for forcing my son to give me half of his income? I won the lottery, $1,000 a day for life. I'm 58 and my son is 19. I went to him and I told him that I wanted to make a deal. I'd give him the ticket. In return, he'd give me half of the money until I die. And then he gets all the money after I die. He said he needed to think about it. He came back and said that it wasn't really fair for me to want half. What? <laughs> he said that I could live another 40 years, that he might need the money more and that I should take 20%. What? I said that I'd think about it. I signed the ticket and I claimed the lump sum. I'm seeing a lawyer to set up my son for life. His education will be paid for. When he gets older, he'll be able to purchase a home for free, basically. A trust fund will be set up so he gets a good amount of money for the rest of his life. Now he's pissed that I went back on my offer. I thought I was being smart, but I didn't realize how greedy he was. He told my ex about the money and she's pissed that I'm not giving her anything. <laughs> We've been divorced for years. I owe her nothing. No, I won't give you anything if you ask me. There's a reason I'm using a throwaway account. I Oh my god. <laughs> Please tell me this one's not real. I don't even know how to react to that. And I also don't know how to say it politely. OP, your son is an absolute dingbat. <laughs> A greedy one too. Oh yeah, $500 every single day for free. And then $1,000 every single day for free when my parent dies. Oh yeah, that's not fair. I'm going to be greedy and I want more. Did your son even add up how much money that is? OP, if I were in your shoes and I offered this to one of my kids and this is how they reacted. Like, not only would I be heartbroken, but I don't feel like I could ever look at my kid the same way again. Like, what are you talking about, you greedy kid? <laughs> what the hell? This comment says, this moron said no thanks to 500 US dollars a day. No offense, I know he's your son, but man, what a greedy a-hole. Holy shit. 500 every day wasn't enough? Needed more? Wow. This one says, not the yay hole, a classic case of giving somebody an inch and them trying to take a mile. And your ex's opinion does not matter. Ignore her. The one under that says, no kidding. His son's a complete dumbass. It's free money, but you can't agree to give up part of it. I wonder if OP knew that he was raising such a selfish idiot before this. Yeah, I wouldn't want to give them any money after this. This comment says, his education will be paid for. Yeah, that's good because he definitely doesn't sound like he's smart enough to qualify for any scholarships. This comment says, not the gay hole sounds like your son and your wife are both greedy f who deserve nothing. Good on you though for setting it up where his education will be paid for, and so on. From what your post indicates, that's more than he deserves. Yeah, the audacity is so wild. I'm really hoping this one isn't real. Like, you don't have to give your son a cent, OP. You don't have to give anybody a cent. Your son obviously doesn't realize that. So greedy and so entitled. That's not the sort of person you'd want to give money to. Not only are they not appreciative of it, they want more. Yeah, this comment, where your family's a bunch of a-holes, this is why you should never tell anybody you won money. I hope you enjoy life and good luck. Yeah, all the best with it, OP. Yeah, I hope that one's rage bait or something. The next one says, am I the gay hoff for telling my brother-in-law that he's getting bold after he told me I'm gaining weight? I'm female 16. My older sister Mia is 27 and her husband Hugh is 30. Hugh's a bully and I don't like him. He always says something about my weight every single time. Wait, hold on a second. This guy's 30 years old and he's making fun of a 16 year old's weight. Oh my God, get a life, dude. That that's so sad. Mind you, my weight is perfect for my height and I can run a marathon. I'm way fitter than he is, but he always somehow suggests that I'm gaining weight while I have learned to not let it get to me. I don't appreciate somebody acting like this within the family. I've already spoken to Mia and she doesn't do anything. And my parents tell me that it's rude to tell him to not greet or show concern. What? And one time I did confront him. He said his concern is for my health. And if I told him that if he has any health concerns for me, he should bring it up to Mia, who would speak to me as my sister, rather than a grown ass man who I have no bond with, acting like a bully. Anyway, he keeps doing it. So my brother, 18, suggested that I bring up his hair as he's obsessed with saving what remains of it to little success. So I did it last night. They came to visit us and he told me that it looks like I've gained weight. I said, it looks like you've lost a fair bit of hair since we last met. And at this rate, you're going to be bald before 32. He got visibly upset, went to the bathroom to look at his hair and then told Mia and my parents that he was greatly offended. <laughs> I shrugged and said, as long as he speaks about my weight, I'm going to bring up him going bald. If he shuts 
shuts up, I will too. While Mia thinks this is fair game, my parents think that I'm being an a-hole and they want me to apologize to Hugh and be the bigger person. My brother said that I did well. Am I the a-hole? No, you're not the a-hole, OP, and your parents are so wrong. If Hugh was your age, I still feel like you wouldn't be the a-hole, OP. But the fact that Hugh is a 30-year-old man and he's acting like this to you, a 16-year-old, that's so pathetic for Hugh to be acting like this. And of course you're not the a-hole, OP. The top comment says, not the a-hole, but I want to know why your parents think it's acceptable for a 30-year-old man to bully a 16-year-old child. Why is it so important that his feelings mustn't be hurt, but yours are fair game? Yeah, like this comment too, so he can be offended, but you can't? A grown-ass man can be childish, but a child has to be an adult. Kudos to your brother, and I'm glad your sister thinks it's fair game. And well played, ma'am. Yeah, this comment too, not the a-hole. Your parents are the kind of morons who think that their children should endure any insult to ensure that they, the parents, don't have to deal with any drama. They should have told him to shut the f*** up long ago. Yeah, massively embarrassing for Hugh to be a 30-year-old man acting like this to a 16-year-old. And it's also embarrassing how your parents don't stand up for your OP. Yeah, this one too, not the a-hole. I'm not apologizing to a grown-ass man who feels it's okay to bully a teenager. Not sure why you aren't speaking to the adult in the situation. And then ignore your parents. They suck, by the way. The next one says, am I the a-hole for encouraging my daughter not to watch her cousin or clean up his mess? Whenever my sister Lynn goes to any family event, she never watches her own kids and expects everybody else to, including my own children who have complained about it. She'll leave the room with her toddler that acts like a wild animal. I told my children, 10 and 13, not to be duped into watching that brat. My 13 year old daughter left the room when my sister left her alone with her kid to gossip with my mum. My daughter got up and left. Lynn's toddlers pulled all the food off by the tablecloth and spilled red pasta sauce all over my mum's carpet. The kid was screaming and Lynn started to yell at my daughter when I told Lynn it was her responsibility to watch her own kids. Lynn said that she thought my daughter was watching the baby. I asked her, did you ask my daughter too? Lynn said that she thought my daughter was smart enough to watch kids if they were alone with them. Wow, so now you're saying that they're not smart? It's not OP's daughter's fault. My daughter said maybe Lynn should be smarter next time she thinks of having kids that she can't control or watch. Yeah, that was rude. And I did laugh. My mum told my daughter to help pick up the mess because she helped cause it. My daughter refused, saying that it was Lynn's fault because she let her kids run around like animals. My mum said that we could all leave because we had no respect for her or her house. My daughter said that she wouldn't be back until her grandmother and aunt respected her. I took my kids home. My mum thinks I should punish or talk to my daughter and make her apologize, but I won't. I don't think my daughter did anything wrong. And it is Lynn's fault for not watching her own brats. Yeah, this comment, not the yay hole. Lynn should hire a babysitter if she can't keep track of her kids. And good on you for supporting your kids in the situation. I can see how in many families the responsibility could be rolled onto the shoulders of the older kids and force them to babysit just by default, which to be honest isn't right. Parents need to be responsible for their own kids. Yeah, 100%. And the comment under that one too, OP's daughters are badass. The top comment says, honestly, at the age your kids are, I'd say entirely not the a-hole. Not only for how you're supporting them to express their feelings and needs, but also not to bend to the pressure. Don't accept responsibility for stuff that are out of your control and that you haven't agreed to be your responsibility and teach your children the same. You seem to be doing an excellent job at that. The retort that your daughter gave was indeed rude. It would have been better to not say things about others' reproductive choices because it is quite obvious she's picking up these opinions and judgments from her parents. But either way, the parent is the responsible person for whatever the child did, even if there was another minor babysitting. Yeah, that's right, and this one too. Not the a-hole. My mum told my daughter to help pick up the mess because she helped to cause it. How did she help to cause it? By not psychically picking up on her aunt's responsibility handoff? When my kids were that age, I never left a room without being clear who I was asking to watch the kid, and I never took advantage of that. If you have a kid, they're your responsibility. And a story. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. They didn't help make the mess. The absolute audacity. Yeah, no, that responsibility is completely on your sister, OP. And yeah, not your fault. Yeah, this one too, not the yay ho Your sister's assuming that people just look after their kids and she shouldn't, if she had asked. Other story. But even then, your daughter should always be allowed to say no, and your sister has to accept that. Good for you for standing up for your daughter here. The next one's called, am I the yay ho for ruining my stepsister's birthday? My stepsister turned 15 last Saturday. She wanted a family dinner to celebrate. My dad and her mum agreed and invited my dad's side of the family since none of her biological family are in her life. I, 16, I was supposed to be there, but the night before I slept at my grandparents, and then my extended family decided to spend the day with me instead. They told my dad the morning of, and they had a fight. Dad called me and told me that I needed to get them all there, including me, that my stepsister would be crushed if none of us showed up for her. I told him I didn't care. He tried to make us go and make us leave my grandparents' house, but we left already, and he called us a bunch that morning in panic mode. For background, my stepsister's biological father isn't in her life, neither are his family, neither are her mum's family. It was just them until her mum met my dad six years ago. My mum died two years after 
after she walked out on me and my dad. I was close to her family and to my dad's family and most of all my dad. I had and have some issues with the whole mum leaves and then dies so no chance to find out why stuff. But I never really missed her. I just needed my dad and he did give me his time. And Tilly met his wife. His time went all to her and her daughter. And when we all moved in together, it went on her daughter. Sometimes I was included, but it was mainly one-on-one -on -one them. When I asked my dad for time, he'd tell me that he needed to make up for her not having a dad and how I could let his wife make up mum to me. I told him that I needed him. I didn't need the woman who abandoned me or the woman he's now dating. I needed him. He told me not to be so greedy with him and that I'd had him alone for years. I told him it didn't mean I stopped needing him and he said that I had to grow up. I asked him for years, but I always got brushed off. My dad's family would step in and my dad was like, you need to treat both girls the same. And he told them they couldn't be family for me and not her. He'd get mad if they got me more, but always got his stepdaughter more. One Christmas, she got a Switch, 10 games and a TV for her room. I got two games that I didn't like, even though I was told to make a list and some clothes. For my 16th birthday, dad refused to join me and his family to celebrate at their house. He said that my stepsister had a play that she was in. Because I chose my birthday over her play, he didn't get me a gift either. My grandparents found this out Friday night when I was at their house. This is what led to them deciding they were going to prioritize me. After all the crazy of dad finding out calmed down, my stepsister was a mess because we didn't show up to her birthday dinner. Dad told me to stay with my grandparents. I'm still here. But he showed up yesterday after school and he told me my behavior was disgusting. And as her big sister, I should have been there for her and saved her from feeling hurt. He said that I was selfish to my core. Am I the a-hole? Oh my god. No, I don't think so. You're being emotionally neglected, OP. Yeah, this comment. It's ridiculous that dad demands his family treat both daughters biological and step the same, yet displays favoritism at every turn. OP, it's painful to be passed over by a once beloved parent. Unfortunately, though, it might be years if ever before he figures out the damage that he's done to you. Focus on the family who values you and plan for life after high school. Yeah, 100%. I feel so sorry for you, OP. And to call you selfish to your core? That's so out of line. This comment says not the gay whole move in with your grandparents. Yeah, definitely doesn't sound like a bad move, OP. Your dad's so in the wrong, OP. Like this one says too. So he's making up for her not having her dad in her life by making sure that you don't have your dad in your life. I know you have extended family while she doesn't, but it sounds like she's getting two parents and you're getting none. I'm guessing that you don't have a close relationship with your stepmom, not the a-hole. Yeah, that's such a good point. Oh, I need to make up for her not having a dad in her life. Bro, if you keep going the way you're going, your own daughter doesn't have a dad in her life. Oh, that's so sad. The top comment says, not the a-hole. Your dad needs to learn how to parent. You're not equal. She's not his daughter. You are. All children need to feel love and feel special to their parents. I think your dad thinks that his heart's in the right place, but he screwed up. You're not alone. This happens quite often when a man gets a new wife. Previous children tend to get left behind. It sounds like you can use some grief counseling by yourself and also some sessions with your dad to work through it. At 16, you can't just figure this out on your own though. You're still growing into yourself. I'm sorry that you're feeling abandoned by the one person who should be there for you. Yeah, same here. You're definitely not in the wrong, OP. And yeah, definitely. If I were you, I'd be staying with your grandparents. Yeah, all the best with it, OP. The next one that we're going to read is on the Entitled People subreddit. Person expecting me to give them my earnings for her charity cause. Years ago, I taught Zumba classes. When there was a tragedy or somebody was in need, often a bunch of instructors from around town would get together and do a Zumbathon to raise money. I used to co-teach at a church and the classes were very well attended, like two classes per night twice a week with 100 to 150 people per class. Every once in a while the church would ask us to do a fundraiser and we'd usually just announce ahead of time that we were donating that night's receipts to the church in case people wanted to contribute extra. One woman called me because she was a part of a walkathon or something where you put a team together and the team raises money together to donate to the overall cause. She wanted me to donate the money that we earned from a regular class to give to her for her charity. I explained that we're happy to do fundraisers for groups, but they have to provide the venue and participant. We would promote their event in our classes and teach for free, but it was their event. She didn't like this. She figured that since we do it for the church that hosted our classes, we should do it for her too. I pointed out to her that this was my job and how I earned money to eat and pay my bills. She knew that my co-instructor was a teacher, so she said that she'd talk to her since she had another job. I asked her if she'd already asked everybody else that she knew to donate a day's wages to her cause. She was not happy with me. It still astounds me that this person decided the way to donate to a cause was to make somebody else do all the work and sacrifice yeah, what? Yeah, this comment, some people are real generous with other people's money. Yeah, that's so wild. The comment above that one says, why do I have the feeling that the charity this person was doing it for is actually her wallet? There's nothing that says she has to actually give her money to the charity. Yeah, that's enough for today. We need to read something wholesome. What a beautiful episode. Oh, kids these days accepting their queerness and being tolerant of each other's gender identities. It just delights the hell out of me. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. That one's by Bummer Party Comics. Hell yeah, Bummer Party comics. That's so beautiful. It delights me that you're all so awesome. Gonna be late. Wait a second, I've gotta kiss my dog.
dog. Yeah, oh my god, how could you forget? <laughs> that was a close one, OP. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you had a wonderful time today. And if you did, make sure you let me know down below in the comment section. And also like and subscribe. And the comment of the day today goes to Weirdly Curly Plant Stem, Vince's pictures of his cats, beautiful, ethereal, magazine cover worthy, my pictures of my cats, this goblin creature has six legs and is currently attacking my fort. Oh my god, don't worry. I've got so many photos like that too. That's so cute. Are you a cat or a goblin? I'm not sure. Maybe both. I'll put some photos on the screen because I've definitely taken a lot of photos like that too. Don't worry, they're not all super glamorous. That's so funny. Thank you for commenting that and thank you for the support. I'll see you in the next episode, everybody. Make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!